couple of weeks ago, I broke down the real world science behind Team Magma's plan. You all seemed to really like that video and wanted me to do a similar thing with Team Aqua. There's just one problem though, and that's that, well, it's super obvious that Team Aqua's plan is terrible. Mass flooding is great if you're a fish, but I'm not sure if you've noticed this or not, uh, but we're not fish. Team Aqua's plan is incredibly destructive, but it's also supposed to be incredibly destructive. Their goal is to help marine ecosystems thrive at the expense of human civilizations. So sitting here poking fun at all the ways it could harm humans seems a little redundant. I mean, it's not like a prolonged global rainstorm would cause severe and irreversible damage to marine and terrestrial ecosystems alike and result in the death of around 50% of all water type Pokemon or anything crazy like that. <laughs> There's a title appearing behind me, isn't there? Uh, I'm getting smaller in the frame so you can read it better. Well, that's not a great sign. Richard... Hit that intro. For those who haven't played Pokemon Sapphire yet or need a refresher, Team Aqua are basically just huge water type Pokemon stands. They love them some fish, and they're real mad that we humans keep messing up all their water. So they plan to summon the legendary Pokemon Kyogre, who's capable of creating massive rainstorms that will raise sea levels worldwide and give water Pokemon more space to thrive. Now, immediately, there's one question we need to ask. Is this even possible? Could Kyogre really summon a rainstorm so powerful that it would flood the whole Earth? That may seem like an obvious yes. Given enough time, Kyogre could keep pumping water down onto the Earth until even the highest mountains were underwater. But it's actually a bit more complicated. See, rain is not some magical water that materializes out of the sky, it's part of the water cycle. Water in lakes and oceans evaporates, turns into clouds, and eventually comes back down as rain. We went over this cycle in way more detail in the Team Magma video, so I won't rehash it all again, but the important thing is that this cycle is a closed system. There's no new water coming into or leaving Earth. The water that we've got is all the water we're gonna get. So the very best that Kyogre could do would be to put all the world's water into the oceans. So how much water would that be? Well, there's an estimated 322,519,000 cubic miles of water here on Earth. 96.5% of that water is already in the oceans. That leaves 11,515,729 cubic miles or around 12 quintillion gallons of water stored in lakes, rivers, clouds, the ground, basically anywhere that isn't the oceans. Assuming the Pokemon world is roughly similar to our own, if Kyogre was able to convert every single drop of that water into rain and pour it into the oceans, accounting for the fact that 29% of the earth is covered in land, it would raise the sea level by around 124 meters or 408 feet all around the world. This would cause absolutely devastating flooding to all coastal areas. Basically, every small island would completely sink, along with the entirety of the US states of Delaware, Florida, Louisiana, Rhode Island, New Jersey, Mississippi, Maryland, and South Carolina. However, any part of the world with an elevation above 407 feet would be completely untouched. 
by the oceans at least. I mean, they're still getting absolutely trashed by a storm this big. So long story short, it's impossible to completely flood the earth using rain alone. There simply is not enough water. So take that, everyone who commented on my 1 billion lions video. Get out of here. It's that time of the video again where I ask you to do stuff. Hey, I see you mousing over the progress bar down there to look where to skip to, but wait just a second. I know that everybody hates these parts of the video, so I won't bore you with some long, drawn-out plea for your money. It'll be the fastest plea for money you've ever seen in your life. This channel was made possible with the help of all my supporters on Patreon. For just a couple of bucks a month, you can get access to all sorts of cool perks like early access to videos, two exclusive live streams a month where I play through whatever game you want me to, a private Discord for fellow gamers and science enjoyers, and suggesting and voting on future video topics for this show. If you want to support, click the link at the top of the description down below. If you're not able to support the channel directly but still want to help out, drop a comment below saying literally anything you want and click the subscribe button. Let's be honest, it doesn't really do anything for you, it won't guarantee that YouTube will show you my videos in the future, but it does help my channel out in the algorithm. And most importantly, if you like this video, tune in next week. I post new videos every single Saturday. I have a whole bunch on my channel, so if you want to see my new videos as soon as they come out, don't rely on some fickle algorithm. Take a page out of Thanos' book and do it yourself. Whew, if that isn't enough to earn a sub, I don't know what is. All right, now, uh, this guy was talking about fish or something. I don't know. But then again, Kyogre is a magical dolphin from the dawn of time, so just for the sake of argument, let's say that instead of creating rain through evaporation, it can just magically make as much water as it wants. In that case, in order to completely flood the earth up to the peak of Mount Everest, Kyogre would need to rain down one billion, 86 million, 221,420 cubic miles of water. That's a lot of rain. The world record for the most rainfall in a 24-hour period is held by Tropical Storm Claudette, which dropped 42 inches, or 1,067 millimeters of rain, down on Alvin, Texas. If Kyogre could create a storm of this severity across the entire world, then it would take 22.7 years of constant rain to completely flood the world. And believe it or not, in a storm like that, the flooding is the least of your worries. Well, no, that's not true. If you live on land, then the flooding, it's pretty bad. What I'm trying to say is, summoning a storm that covers the entire world for two decades can have some unintended consequences. For starters, heavy rain clouds can block around 69% of all sunlight. How bad is this? Oh, I don't know. Maybe ask the dinosaurs. See, 66 million years ago, the dinosaurs were chilling out, living their best lives like they had for the past 165 million years, until a big ol' 8 mile wide asteroid hit the Earth at 45,000 miles per hour. I hate it when that happens. This caused massive earthquakes and wildfires that killed a lot of the dinosaurs outright, but it also kicked a ton of dust and ash up into the atmosphere that completely blocked out the sun for 15 years. This resulted in global temperatures dropping to around 46 degrees Fahrenheit or 7.8 degrees Celsius, triggering a global winter that lasted for decades and a period of ice ages that lasted 2 million years. This is what 20 years of obscured skies will do, and it's this same fate that awaits the Pokemon world. Granted, ash and dust obscure sunlight better than clouds, so the effects might not be so extreme, but we can expect a great deal of Team Aqua's brand spanking new water to turn to ice. 
This global winter completely finished off the terrestrial dinosaurs, but more importantly for today's discussion, it also devastated the marine ecosystems. In our world, photosynthesizing plankton make up the basis for every marine food chain. But without sunlight to get energy, around 90% of these plankton died. Along with them, around 55% of all marine mammals, 43% of turtles, 9% of sharks, and 100% of marine dinosaurs went extinct. All because the sun got a little covered for a few decades. In summoning Kyogre, Team Aqua could certainly create more space for water Pokemon. There just might not be that many water Pokemon left to enjoy it. Of course, this is the most extreme example. In reality, Team Aqua never wanted to flood the entire Earth. Just make it rain for a little while and raise the oceans a little bit. Realistically, Kyogre can make a storm lasting a couple days, raise the sea levels by... 25 feet, and that'd be more than enough for Water-type Pokemon to thrive. A plan that simple might have worked perfectly, save for one tiny little issue that makes even a plan this modest quite possibly the most harmful thing you could do to marine ecosystems. And that issue is us. Folks, I want to take you on a little journey as we follow the life of a water bottle. Picture this, you're deep in the heat of battle against Youngster Joey. Your mudkip is low on health, so you give it a fresh water, and when you're done, you toss that bottle aside. Just leave it exposed to the elements. Most things when left out like this will eventually decompose. Outside forces like rain and wind and bacteria will break the chemical bonds that hold their molecules together, reducing them to their base natural components. However, plastics are different. Their long polymer chains are held together with carbon bonds, which are far stronger than the chemical bonds found in other materials. When something plastic is left out to the elements, sure, it will crack and break down, but it won't truly decompose on a molecular level to its base natural components. Instead, that plastic bottle will simply break into smaller and smaller plastic bits. We call this microplastic pollution. Now, microplastics are bad enough when left on the side of the road, but things get really bad when these microplastics get into the water. For starters, because these plastic bits are so tiny, often less than 5 millimeters across, they're nearly impossible to clean up. Once they get into the water, they're there to stay. This is a really bad thing because fish will often mistake these floating plastic bits for food. Ingesting plastic can lead to all sorts of nasty health effects and can damage the tissue, nerves, even the genetics of not only the fish that ate the plastic, but also anything else higher up the food chain. And do you want to know the number one way these microplastics end up in the water in the first place? It's not pollution from boats or commercial fishing or ocean dumping. It's rain. An estimated 80% of the trash and microplastic pollution in our oceans and lakes right now started out as simple litter on the side of the road maybe miles from any coast. When it rains, the runoff water will naturally flow back into large bodies of water, maybe through man-made structures like gutters and storm drains. And it carries all that trash with it, breaking it up into smaller and smaller pieces as it goes, filling marine habitats with deadly microplastics. This isn't some hypothetical scenario, it's something that happens here, in real life, every day, all over the world. 
if Kyogre really did summon a massive global rainstorm, sure, it might rise sea levels a little bit, but it would bring all that trash with it. Sure, you're creating more space for water Pokemon, but not any space they'd want to live in. So, what's the lesson? Well, Archie, it's actually pretty simple. Water Pokemon, and indeed all marine life, don't need more space. The oceans are vast. There's more than enough room for all manner of fish, whales, and turtles, and all the creatures of the sea to live and thrive. It's not about giving them more space. It's about preserving the space they already have. So the next time you drink out of a plastic bottle, toss it in the nearest recycling bin. You might just save a fish and stop a crazy pirate from flooding the entire world. And a massive thank you to all my patrons, including Alkazam, Aspa102, Big Dog Tie for the win, Sidian, Gremlin the Goblin, Sherry and Mark, The Boss Killer 94, and Captain Kirby. This show would not be possible without your support, so thank you.